Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to practice writing some E words. E. Now I want you to listen really carefully. C. C. So we would use that word in, I can see a tree in my garden. C. Can you try and write C? It's got S E. So it's got two sounds in it, but one of them's a digraph. S E C. Have a go. I'm writing it as well. I wonder if yours will look the same as mine. Shall I show you mine? Here it is. Does yours look like mine? So I've got a S E C. Well done. Okay, are you ready for your next word to listen to? The next word is a colour. And it's actually the colour of a tree, the leaves on the tree. So, can you guess what colour it is? <laughs> You're right, it's green. So, green. Now that, ooh, let's listen to that one again. Green. There seems to be quite a lot of sounds in that word. Listen carefully and I'm going to use my fingers to help me spell my word in my head. So, listening first. Green. G. R. E. N. Oh, goodness, we've got one, two, three, four sounds in this word. It's quite a long word, isn't it? Green. Let me do that one again. Perhaps you can do it with me this time. Find your four fingers. Are you ready? G. R. E. N. Green. Well done. So let's write green. Now I'm going to add my sound buttons to go underneath mine, just to give you a little bit longer to write that, because that's quite a long word to write, isn't it? Are you ready to look at mine? And does yours look like mine? <gasps> well done. So we've got our G, R, E, N, green. Well done. Okay. So we've done our E digraph, now we're going to move on to our trigraph. Now we'll only do one word because actually trigraphs are hard work, aren't they? Can you remember how to write I? It's a I and a G and a H. Or you could say an I, a G and an H. Okay, because sometimes we were, we're getting a bit older now, aren't you? And, and, and it's important that we use our letter names as well as the sounds of the letters. So, the word we're going to do is I, I, like a balloon flies high in the sky, high. So it begins with and then it's got the trigraph I. Have a go at writing it. Are you remembering your G sits on a line? It doesn't stand up. Are you ready to have a look at mine? See if it looks like mine. That's right, so we got H, I. Well done. So, as well as learning your phonics, and you're getting so good at doing that, and I am so proud of you, we are also going to be looking at some words. And we're going to look at two words this week. And we're going to look at the word me, as in me. And we're also going to look at the word be. Now, to do this, let's have a little look at the first one. Me. Let me 
write it for you. Here it is. Me. Can you write that as well? Have a go at writing it on the bit of paper in front of you. Now, I'm going to set you a challenge. I have got my phone here and I have put it on so that we're going to do a countdown. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to see how many times can you write the word me. Are you ready? I'm going to press start. On your marks, get set, go. While you're doing that, I'm going to practice writing me. I'm going to remember it's Maisie Mountain Mountain. And an F. Maisie Mountain Mountain. Don't forget your Maisies, please. I wonder how many times you're going to be able to write it. You hear? It's finished. So, are you ready? I did my knees. One, two, three, four, five, six times. Well done, everybody. Now, the next word we're going to do is B. Let me show you the word B. Me and B rhyme. We've been thinking about rhyming words, haven't we? Here's the word B. Okay, so it's not the buzzy B, because the buzzy B actually has got the E digraph in it. Let me just write that quickly for you so you can see. This is the B as in the buzzy B. This is like, what will you be? when you grow up. That's how we use it in our sentences. So we're going to write B again. I'm going to, let me just turn my phone on again. I'm going to set the timer for 30 seconds and we're going to see, are you ready? How many times can you do it? Off you go. And Mrs Maudsley's going to have a go at doing it at the same time. So B, up, all the way down, up and around, and an E. All the way down, up and around. Make sure your B's look a, like a B and not like a number six. You know how I sometimes say, oh, that looks like a number six, not a B. How many times can you write it? Oh, it's finished. Look at mine. This time I wrote one, two, three, four, five beads. But I think that was because I didn't do as many as I did with me because I was trying really hard to remember that I wasn't to do a B like that, like a number six. I remembered that I have to go all the way down, up a little bit and around the boot. And then I did my E. Now, in maths this week, we're going to be looking at shapes again, but it won't be our 2D shapes, like we've got our circles and our squares and our triangles. We will be talking about that, but we're going to be learning about 3D shapes. And I'm going to put a video on Tapestry later on this week, all about 3D shapes. So see if you can start at the beginning of the week by talking about 2D shapes. Remembering, let me just get something to show you. So here we go, we've got a square here. This is one of my mug mats. You can see the rings from the mugs. That stops my table getting spoiled. Here, we've got a 2D shape. It's a square, isn't it? So see if you can talk about how many sides has the shape got. So a square has got four sides. How many corners or vertices is the grown-up word. I wonder if you can use that. How many corners has each 2D shape got? So again, a square has got four sides. And look, a square is interesting. It's different to a rectangle. This is a rectangular shape because a rectangle has two long sides and then two short sides. A square 
all the sides are the same length. So have a look at the 2D shapes you can find at home to see how many, see how long the sides are and are they the same or are they different? And remember as well, are the sides curved or are they straight? And as I say, I'm going to put a video on tapestry all about 3D shapes later on this week. Now, I hope you are all well and you are keeping safe. We look forward to seeing you soon. And I hope you enjoy this week's work all about farm animals. And have a little look at the planning because on there you will see one of your friends who dressed up as a farmer. I've written on the planning, do you think the teachers should dress up as a farmer one day? If you do, you will have to tell your mums and dads to put that on tapestry and I'll see if we can. You take care, I'm missing you lots, but I am so proud of all your learning that you're doing at the moment.